How's it going YouTube? My name is Elvin Ninja 7 your resident Mistweaver monk, and welcome into this 10.2.5 Caster Mistweaver Mythic Plus Guide. Now before we actually jump into the guide, I do want to talk about why I think this build or this guide is important. Now it's no secret that the Mistweaver player base is kind of split in two when it comes to Mythic Plus. There are the more traditional stand and melee, do most of your healing through Ancient Teachings, Awaken Feyline player base. That's the traditional way to play it. And then there are some people that just really despise that play style or have not given that play style a, a true shot or a true chance yet and prefer to utilize the synergies of all of our casted spells like Vivify, Renewing Mist, and Enveloping Mist and rely on those synergies to get the healing done. But one of the purposes of this caster playstyle is to kind of bridge that gap or to give you guys a taste of both worlds, both playstyles. Well, why is it important to do that? Well, I'm sure you guys can understand that with the influx of all the new Mistweaver players, there are a lot of players that just copy a talent build and isolate that that one half or that one portion of Mistweaver's kit and don't really understand all of the intricacies or interactions of Mistweaver. But the beauty of this build is to allow those players to kind of put their, their foot in the door open up the other half of this spec and really gain an understanding of all of our interactions and intricacies. So I can simplify all of that into saying that there are three times when I think that this build is right for you. Number one is if you are playing the traditional Feyline Stomp, Ancient Teachings, Chiji build, and kind of just go through the motions, not really understanding what all of your buttons do, or maybe you have mastered that playstyle and wanna gain an understanding of the rest of our kit, or on the other half of that coin, maybe you are someone who does not stand in melee and keys and prefers to just channel a soothing mist and stay out of those melee mechanics, or you don't like the gameplay of Feline Stomp, Spinning Crane Kick, uh, the single target damage rotation. And the third option, the third time that I think that this build would be best for you guys is actually during Bursting Week. Now, I actually swapped to this build while pushing on Bursting Week, and this build has accomplished my highest IO keys done today because of how well and how easily it can manage bursting. Now, already, admittedly, Mistweaver does have an excellent kit, but uh, some minor tweaks to the traditional Mythic Plus build, which you will see in this build, make it even more trivial. Now, without further ado, let me go ahead and show you guys what the build is, and it might look familiar to you, whichever side of the Mistweaver totem pole you lie on, and that's because it, it literally is a hybrid of the two. All I've done is I've taken the traditional uh, fist weaving or, or however you want to call it, the, the traditional mist weaver way to do keys with Feline Stomp, Ancient Teachings, uh, Teachings of the Monastery, and I have just changed two talents. Yeah, just two talents, which transfer some of our power into our casted spells, thus making it uh, more viable and less punishing to stand out, dodge a melee mechanic, and be out in range casting a spell or two. And then also it opens up giving us a new cooldown, a semi cooldown, which works very well with our already very short cooldowns in the 40 second recharging Shaylin's Gift and one minute Chiji. So what are these two talents that I've changed? Well, already you've probably noticed that I have changed Rising Mist to Tear of Morning. And once again, this is really what makes it to where our casted spells gain more value. Yes, we're losing a lot of power by extending those hots and making pools that can last a little bit longer, a little bit less comfortable since our Renewing Mists uh, don't last as long, our Rapid Diffusion procs don't last as long, but we're trading that out for a little bit more burst healing and a little bit more hot healing. Yes, we're going to have less hots rolling because Rising Mist allows us to extend all of our hots, but our hots that do roll, which meaning our Enveloping Mists, will heal for more since they are also going to be cleaving onto everyone with our Renewing Mist. Now, you might recognize this talent or know or understand this talent from our current raid build, and that's because this talent has gained a lot of power, not just from itself changing a little bit over the years, but because we, Mistweavers, have gained a lot of buffs to namely Enveloping Mist and our actual casted spells. So when these spells do more healing, Talents like Tear of Mourning gain more value because they transfer more of that healing. So how does this work? Well, the top line honestly does not really matter. It can spread your Renewing Mist if you get really lucky with it. But what really matters is that our Vivify Cleaving onto our Renewing Mist, basically our Invigorating Mist talent, is going to be stronger. But then also all of our Enveloping Mists 
are going to be funneling 20% of their healing into the renewing mists that are active. The other talent point that I've swapped from my traditional ancient teachings build is I used to have a single point to secret infusion just because I couldn't find where to put it honestly but now I'm putting that into focus thunder. Now why focus thunder over all of these other options that we could have chosen? Well focus thunder allows us to empower two spells with our thunder focus T instead of one and this is kind of what I was talking about about having another cooldown with this build having two empowered spells with the focus thunder makes our thunder focus T basically a 30 second miniature cooldown which the idea here is that we're going to be buffing both enveloping mist so using both of those thunder focus T charges on enveloping mist not only will we gain basically a shock heal because it makes our enveloping mist instant heal and do a pop cast or a, a, a spot heal on them, which is a, about equivalent to a vivifies worth healing. But since we are playing rapid diffusion and those enveloping mists are also going to spawn a renewing mist on the party, we're just creating a lot of AoE hot ticks all at once, basically almost instantly. So what that's going to look like is we're going to thunder focus T, enveloping mist, and then enveloping mist the second person. And you see all of a sudden there are so many hot ticks. And if we choose to pick a third person, the spam vivifies into all of that vivify healing is going to roll into those renewing mist as well and once again since we're taking tier of morning the vivify cleave from invigorating mist is going to be empowered and it's this little mechanic that i used on bursting weeks to just make it laughable i would use both of my renewing mist charges on two allies and then i would pick the third and fourth ally to enveloping mist enveloping mist then i pick the fifth ally just to spam vivifies into and i could just heal almost any amount of stacks of bursting and the other half of the build is that we're still able to run jade fire stomp or feline stomp whatever you want to call it ancient teachings and teachings of the monastery and you can still gain all the value from that yes you aren't going to be extending those hots but the hots that you do cast are going to be more powerful once again making the time that you spend out of melee less powerful but the time that you do spend in melee is so much more powerful than the traditional uh like chilled out playing in ranged play style now what does this accomplish what does it accomplish allowing you to play both ways well once again if you're someone who just likes to stand back and channel soothing mist all day that's fine you're not going to be losing a ton of value by picking up these uh, couple of talents but now you have the option to throw down a feyline or a jade fire line jade fire line <laughs> they changed this spell and it's already tripping me up but now you have the option to come into melee and just do a couple spinning crane kicks and look at this aoe sustained healing that you have so you're gaining the strength of the solid like really solid maintenance healing that the the traditional fey line build has and gaining the power of how strong your spot heals can be from the caster build the traditional play out in ranged channel soothing mist casting build you're gaining both of those strengths now yes you will hear some flack to this play style because in, in an ideal world say that you're pushing a plus 31 key say you're the top end player if you can get the job done if you can do the healing in that key while also playing the build that does just the most damage then ideally you're gonna play the build that does the most damage that's why you see more people at the top end playing Rising Mist because it, it incentivizes you more to just cycle your damage buttons a little bit more often. But for the majority of the player base, this talent choice, these swaps will not make or break your key. If anything, if you're someone who still does struggle with bursting or struggles with maybe you feel like you don't have enough cooldowns because you're just now learning how to optimize your maintenance healing, then this could actually make your key. This could make your key so much easier by just having another 30 second minor cooldown in your arsenal. But one of the biggest weaknesses is since you have access to both worlds, it's kind of hard deciding which one to optimize at the right time. Should I be in melee spinning crane kicking or maybe doing my single target trying to reset those rising sun kicks rotation? Or should I bounce out into ranged and be casting some spells like Channel of Soothing Mist and pump some healing? Now, this will all come from comfortability inside keys, so practice in dungeons. So once you start to learn when the damage is about to happen, you can really start to kind of control that variability. Should I jump out and, and get my hots prepared for this incoming damage, or will my spinning crane kick be enough? But for the most part, your default rotation is gonna be your fey line. You wanna stay and default to this, and for those who do not play with Feyline, 
hear me out. Trust me, this is, it's just gonna make your life while you're out in range doing those casts a lot easier because people are gonna have a higher average health percentage. So if there are five or more mobs, you generally want to just stick to spinning crane kick. It's, it's really that simple, but look at how much maintenance healing you can do to your party by just spinning crane kicking. As long as you maintain your jade fire line or your jade fire stomp, have that to stand on, you can really dip your toes in and out and keep that buff. Once you walk off of that uh, jade fire line, you keep that buff for a few seconds. And you see here, if I walk back on, I don't have to refresh my ancient teachings. I just have to dip my toes onto the fey line. So a lot of people, a big concern with fey line is that you're confined to that line, but you're really not confined. You can really dodge mechanics, come back into melee and still get some healing value as long as you keep that physical line there. However, if there are four or less targets or, or if you're gonna need to set up some more hots by using your Rapid Diffusion Rising Sun Kick procs, then you are gonna wanna pay attention to your Ancient Teachings buff, which here for me on, on this weak aura is I have it on this bar. So you gain it for 15 seconds every time that you either cast Essence Font or Jade Fire Stomp. And it's very important because this is what makes your single target damaging buttons heal. As you see here, all of these blackout kicks are gonna go into someone that needs healing. All I'm doing is cycling Tiger Palm, blackout kick. Now the way that you optimize this rotation, the single target or up to four target rotation, is that you one, your, your top priority is just keep rising sun kick on cooldown. This is gonna keep some renewing mist flowing. That way when damage does happen where you have to use your instant cast vivify, you'll get a lot more value from it. And then after that, you want to try to tiger palm twice. It's okay to just tiger palm once. Since you're gonna be on your fey line, those tiger palms are gonna strike twice, making your blackout kick, your next blackout kick hit two additional times. But the most optimal way to get more damage is to hit twice. So if I tiger palm twice, I'm gaining, as you see here on my blackout kick icon, I'm gaining four stacks, and then my next blackout kick will hit four additional times. And through that, through all of those blackout kicks, you're very high, highly likely to reset your rising sun kick cooldown, starting this rotation all over again. So once again, we're gonna rising sun kick, we can tiger palm twice, and then we're gonna blackout kick that most likely, ooh, we did not get a, rise, a rising sun kick reset, but now we can refresh that ancient teachings buff, Rising Sun Kick, we're at four stacks, so we're gonna Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, we're gonna Tiger Palm twice, Blackout Kick, Rising Sun Kick, and once again, it's just that easy. It's easy to rinse and repeat. All the while, we're utilizing one very important talent to, to finish off that spot healing or, or do all of the spot healing required while keeping up this maintenance healing damage rotation through this talent called Vivacious Vivification. Now, all it says is every 10 seconds, your next Vivify becomes instant, but this is very good at keeping the fluidity of our damage rotation without sacrificing too much. And once again, since we are running Tier of Mourning, this Vivify will cleave onto everyone a little bit harder. So if everyone's at about 80% health, one person takes a chunk down to 40% health. As long as you've been doing this single target damage rotation, you'll have a couple of renewing miss out just from all those rising sun kits that you're gonna be applying. And then if you spot heal that person as soon as they drop down to 40% health, everyone who has a renewing mist on them, a free renewing mist from your rising sun kicks, is gonna get a nice juicy spot heal. But what do you do if the damage is a little bit higher? Well, once again, you have three major cooldowns at your disposal, and now we also have Thunder Focus T to also manage that damage. So if you need to spot heal just like two people, maybe one person has a big dot on them and someone else has taken some bigger damage, then Thunder Focus T is great for that. You Thunder Focus T, heal the one person that took the most damage or is at the most risk of dying, and then Enveloping Mist the second person as well. That way they both get a big spot heal and then you can really capitalize on all the hots that you're getting those both of those free renewing mists that you're getting from Rapid Diffusion by channeling a Soothing Mist and topping them up with Vivify. Now, Soothing Mist is a great way to spam multiple Vivifies into one person. However, you normally only want to channel a Soothing Mist. It only gains efficiency in casting multiple spells. So if you're gonna cast an Enveloping Mist and a Vivify onto someone, then you gain more efficiency by just channeling a Soothing Mist. However, if you just need to cast one Vivify on one target, then you don't wanna channel a Soothing Mist because it's not gonna be efficient. Instead, you'll gain more value by just casting that one spell. It's just quicker 
to cast a single spell on one ally. And then we also have Chi-Chi. Now look, I'm sure you guys can understand Chi-Chi can be very complex. And in fact, I've done a completely separate video on Chi-Chi. That link will be down in the description. I'm not gonna take up too much of your time in this video on Chi-Chi because I have a fully in-depth uh, Chi-Chi guide in the description for you guys. However, I will say that the swap from Rising Mist to Tier of Warning does change up your Chi-Chi's healing profile a little. You don't extend your Chi-Chi longer, meaning that yes, Chi-Chi is out for 12 seconds, but traditionally you can extend the healing that you're getting from Chi-Chi for a little bit longer because you're gonna extend all the free enveloping mist that you're getting and renewing mist that you're getting with Rising Mist. But instead, with Tier of Mourning, that healing is a lot shorter since you're not extending those hots, but it's a little burstier because all those free enveloping mists, once again, all those free renewing mists that you're getting from Invoke Chi-Chi are going to be cleaving into each other. So the enveloping mists are going to heal some of the, in the allies that have renewing mists on them. Which means that, yes, Chi-Chi is already one of the strongest um, healer cooldowns in a Mythic Plus environment because it can cover a long period of time. But now we have made it stronger during that period of time, but shorten that period of time a little bit. So it does change its healing profile, but it makes it stronger in some ways, a little bit weaker in some other ways. And then next up is Shailun's Gift. Now, as you know, the longer you stay in combat, the more this starts to tick up in stacks. The number one rule is you don't want to sit at 10 stacks too often. If you have multiple cooldowns available, say that you have Shailun's and Chi-Chi both available and, and Shailun's is at 9 or 10 stacks, normally you want to go with Shailun's gift since it is the, the shorter cooldown or it takes less time to recharge than Chi-Chi's actual cooldown since it does recharge fully in 40 seconds and Chi-Chi is a one minute timer. But Shailun's gift is, a, is very simple but it can get a little tricky because you have to choose a target to cast it on and it can get scary if you choose the wrong target. Now, the one target that you do choose will get a mastery proc, just increasing the healing done by a very small amount. But if that target does end up dying, then no one gets the heal. But once again, Shailun's Gift is very simple because it literally just does a crap load of healing to the entire party. And then finally, Revival. Now, Revival is a very simple cooldown it also is just an instant heal on everyone in the party but most importantly the the, the biggest part of this spell in a, a mythic plus environment is that it does dispel all disease magic and poison effects so it basically is like a miniature mass to spell or it is a mass to spell say in like an, a theoretical environment you had all of your buttons available and there was a big damage instance coming up but it was also going to apply a debuff or like a dot or two to your allies which button should you press? Well, then Revival is the perfect cooldown. So normally what I tend to do is I tend to try to cycle these cooldowns and cycle my Thunder Focus T, trying to avoid using my Revival as long as I can. That way I can get the most value out of it. But it don't think that you should never press it because it is also a great AoE heal in a pinch. If someone is about to die and you need an instant snap of healing, Revival is perfect. So just really quickly to recap, you're gonna try to do as much damage and stay actually physically in melee doing this damage as much as possible. But as soon as that maintenance healing becomes not enough to heal the party, it's okay to cast your spells. So you wanna keep those renewing mist charges off cooldown, but then also if you need to do more spot healing, you have Thunder Focus T, Enveloping Mist to spot heal one person, spot heal two people, and then if you need to turn that into AoE healing, then after you do that, you just pick a target to channel Soothing Mist into and slam those Vivifies, healing everyone that has those hots on them. And then you just rinse and repeat, get back to melee when it's safe, making sure to, to do the correct rotation depending on how many targets there are, but focusing on the basics like rising sun kick on cooldown and try not to sit at two stacks of renewing mist and try not to sit on 10 stacks of Shailun's gift for too long. So that is the, the very basic rotation. Now I'm kind of hoping that some of you guys are more experienced with one of these playstyles, so I'm not going too in depth with them. I just wanna introduce you to the other half of our kit. And hopefully you guys can uh, tune into one of my other guides on these two play styles to learn the rest of the ins and outs. Now, at, before we get done with this video, I do want to talk about stats. For the most part, you don't really change up your stats from either play style into this build. You 
You keep the same stats for the most part, honestly. You wanna keep your haste and crit as close to 30%, but it's okay to stay between 35 and 30%. But from there, since you're pushing Mythic Plus, you want to push your versatility a little higher. Mine is a, admittedly a little low, actually, because this not only is a great damage and healing modifier, but it also keeps you alive. It gives you a little bit added durability and if you're someone who is used to standing out in ranged, trust me, there will be more mechanics while you're standing in melee. And then vice versa, if you're not used to casting out in ranged a little bit more, you might get caught off guard by like a frontal, like a cone or something that's just a little wider at the tip. So all, as always, versatility is better and it can help you stay alive. So once again, that's about 30 to 35% haste and crit, and then around 20 or a little bit higher percent versatility. And you should be golden. You should be able to push Pretty high keys, honestly. And finally, I am gonna close this video out by talking about trinkets, something that, that I, I honestly never really do. But you're gonna want to look for trinkets that give you stats as always. Stat sticks are a great way to increase your overall damage and overall throughput in a Mythic Plus dungeon. But on use trinkets are not bad at all, which we will get into. But C star is gonna be an all star of a trinket. It gives versatility as a base stat, which is always nice. Once again, increasing your damage a little bit, but increasing your survivability. But then in a, just a proc, a random proc of intellect can really help. And it's really nice. It's a really solid trinket. Next up is the Everbloom trinket, Coagulated Genosar Blood. Once again, this gives you intellect as a primary stat, but can give you random procs of a giant chunk of crit. So once again, just a great stat stick trinket. And then Echoing Tearstone, you guys know this trinket is very good. It kind of bridges that gap between a stat stick and an on-use trinket because you use it, stores healing, and can heal someone in a pinch, and then it gives you a stat bonus after the fact. And then the two raid trinkets that I wanna talk about are Pips, which is just, it's just a stat stick. I mean, it literally gives you stats on a proc. You can't go wrong, but I would say that the other two are, are probably better. I think that how I would personally rate the three stat stick trinkets that I've talked about is I would go Sea Star first, and then Pips and uh, Coagulated Blood. You can't go wrong with either one. Just go for item level. And then finally, I wanna talk about Smoldering Seedling. Now, if you're doing the traditional Feyline build, this trinket can be hard to utilize because you do have to put down a totem, and then you do have to heal the totem. Uh, so it can find, be hard to find times to heal this totem, but the reward is a lot of healing. It disperses your healing that you're doing, into it into your allies and then can proc a giant juicy heal uh, once you heal it up so it can be rewarding but one good thing about a build like this is that you're gonna most likely always have a renewing mischarge available to put on the totem to make it be able to be healed faster due to your tier set since you're going to be doing your whole melee rotation and then also you're playing talents that just do spot healing really well like having tier of mourning cleave onto your allies for the most part even more is going to couple really well with the healing that it's also going to be dispersing onto your party but all in all you really can't go wrong with any combination of these trinkets and i'm sure there are a couple more that can get the job done just as well but for the most part you want to stick to like maybe two passive trinkets or just one on use one passive trinket like i am running but guys there you have it that is going to be my quick guide hopefully it was quick i never know what these videos i'll know after editing but there you have it, there's my quick guide for Caster, Mistweaver, and Mythic Plus. Once again, this video and this build is, for the most part, catering more toward people who are newer to Mistweaver and just need to experience more of the kit. And this is a great bridge of the gap between our two you know, traditional split play styles. But like I said, just because of how much raw healing and how much spot healing you do, plus how much maintenance healing you do, this build can surprise you. I mean, like I said, I have done my highest keys with this build, albeit it was on Bursting Week. So it does have its moments in the top end of the ladder, but anywhere under like a plus 25, this build is just as good as the other builds. You will not trash a key because you're swapping these two these two talents. Trust me, guys. But thank you as always to, for all the support, especially to my Patreons. You guys have no idea how much you're carrying my channel. I say it at the end of every video, but I just have to emphasize it. You're the reason why I'm able to even give YouTube a shot. So thank you so much if your name is on the screen. And if you wanna find out how to support me through Patreon, there are a ton of different tiers. So click that link down in the description while you're watching all those other guide videos and go check out my Patreon. But guys, my name's Elvin Ninja 7 Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.
Until then, take care.